fear comes upon you. They had fear, we had fear. They were afraid of us, and we were afraid of them. So it worked both ways, but it was something that you can really explain it because you had to be there to feel like we felt. We felt sorry, and yet we have anger. See, we, I, me, I, I was being a loving, kind person. But when it's war, you know, it's different. Well, they, uh, they give a lot of credit to, to heroes. And I always have said that a hero has to be scared to do the things that he does. No matter where you are, you're afraid of death. I didn't want her to die, you know. At 21 years old, I have a long and hope, hope that I live a long life, you know. I, I didn't want her to die, so. But you, you're uh, in, in war where there's bombs and artillery shells dropping on you and small arms. I mean, you don't know whether you're gonna make it or not. One time in Germany, we were uh, dancing up a uh, hill, so not a big one, but a small one. And there were a lot of machine gun there, uh, places there. As I was going up uh, to one part of that hill there, a German jumped out of the hole. And I was pretty close to him too. So we both stand up there solid without moving. Uh, so uh, we don't know what to do, you know. Uh, so I guess I, I don't know, at that moment I, you know, I kind of reflect and say, well, it's going to be me or him. You know? The time I was really scared was when we were uh, on the side and uh, away from the front line. And then there was an airplane flying around circling around like that. It was very, very, very dark. And then he started dropping flares on, on a parachute, and then, uh, then, then you could see everything like that. And then phone rang and says, don't move and don't light any lights because uh, they might see us. So after the plane flew away and uh, flares were not, then you get a phone, uh, phone rang and said, Prepare for action, because we thought we were going to come and uh, bomb us. Well, it's a real thing right there. You get scared and you don't know what to do. And just pray and you don't know where you're going to get it. It feels like real bad to, to lose a friend up there. Well, Claude Mendoza and I had basic training together. And uh, when we got, went to overseas, we got separated and and he was going on a ration party uh, up the hill, and he got ambushed during, during that, and he never did come back. We were watching over the hedgerow. Enemy was on the other side. They were shooting at us and us at them. Anyway, as I was looking, my sergeant said, you look this way, and I looked the other way, so I did. And just then, the fire came from that area, and so I fired right back. As all the firing was, when I looked at my sergeant, he was, you know, we were both on our knees, but, you know, he didn't fall. He took a hit on the neck in one side, not the other, but he didn't fall. When I fired back, well, I believe I got the guy. In fact, I know I did, because we found a weapon, and he had a bullet hole in his forehead. Well, he didn't feel what hit him either, just like my sergeant, he didn't feel nothing. Anyway, when the firing subsided a little bit, stopped, I laid my sergeant down and straightened up his legs. And then uh, straightened up his legs and then, uh, well, there's not too much I could do for him because, you know, he was dead. A lot of commotion, people hollering, you know, French people, la guerre fini, la guerre fini, really something, you know, what the heck they're talking about. And then they said the war had ended. Boy, that was really something. I thank God that the war was over. Everybody went out, get drunk and dancing and kissing the girls and all that. There was no time for me to celebrate. I didn't believe in that. I, to me, it was the time to go to church and, and pray. I guess because I'm Catholic, I don't know. But that was my belief. So I went home and I prayed and thank God that the war was over. Because when you're over there, you're under fire, remember 
who is your loved ones? Who is the people? Who is the people that love you? Who is the people that care for you? Who is the people that raised you, make a man out of you? Well, my mama and my daddy. I experienced a lot when I was in the service. And I promised my mom, I told her, when I come back, you're not going to see this viejo Pedro, old Pedro. You're going to see a new Pedro coming back. She used to call me Pedro. You know? And she says, que bueno que cambiaste. Oh, I'm so glad you changed. I did change a lot. It was more obedient, more lovable. Because I saw things that I shouldn't, I, I'm not allowed to talk about it, but uh, I saw that where I was in Japan, especially in the Philippines, how much love they have for their parents. A lot of love. And I learned that. You get your little more education, a little more out in the world, see how the world is. You can see people in different countries, how they, you know, they're struggling too. They struggle too, and then especially during war. And uh, yeah, I, I think I grew up, became a man. I tried to be a better person when I came back. Because uh, when you're young, you're, you're kind of a little crazy. And so I try to settle, settle down. When I got back, my father t tells me, I want you to come back and I want you to start working again. We're going to give you a crew. They did. I didn't like it. I didn't like when he started. We had another foreman, and we had another, another general foreman. He started pushing the people hard, very hard. They didn't treat us. Pleasant, like I could say, oh yeah, it was a blessing working here. No, it was hard. I told my father, I'm gonna go find me a better life. But you're gonna leave the farm? Yes, Dad. This is not for me, Dad. I went to the United States Army, did my duty. I'm back, I'm gonna make something out of myself. So I came north. That's when they start on San Jose talking about Chavez. 